first, you'll need to power up your HiPod tester. Insert the remote interlock key into the 9-pin signal input terminal on the rear panel. The tester will not output voltage unless the interlock key is properly plugged in to the remote I.O. This allows you to wire pin 4 and 5 up to the DUT enclosure for an extra measure of safety. This is the safe workstation best practice. Connect the power input plug into its socket on the rear panel and the male end into the output receptacle. Now, turn on the power switch on front panel. The tester will automatically navigate to the home screen. The home screen displays the memory number, status indicator, test time, test voltage, and leakage limit or resistance limit. Let's set up an AC HiPod test. From the home screen, rotate the knob to select memory location. Press the knob to select the memory and press again to set parameter. Rotate to select voltage. Press the knob to edit voltage parameters. Rotate the knob again to change the parameter and press the knob to confirm each parameter. Repeat this until all parameters are set. Make sure the connect parameter is set to on so the ACW and IR test will run in a sequence. Once the ACW is set, press back to return to the home screen. Rotate the knob to select the next memory, then press to confirm. Press the knob again to adjust test parameters. Set the test type to IR, then press to confirm. Use the same process to edit the remaining parameters. Now, we are going to connect the 290 to a DUT and run the test sequence. To connect the 290 to the DUT, you will need a high voltage lead, two return clip leads, or you can use an optional adapter box. First, connect the return lead to the return terminal on the 290. Then, connect the HV lead by plugging the white end to the HV terminal on the 290. Once all connected, you can now connect to your DUT. If using the continuity feature, connect the other return lead to the continuity check terminal on the 290. If using the adapter box instead of clip leads, first connect the return clip lead to the return terminal. Then connect the adapter box to the continuity check in the HV terminals of the 290. To connect to the DUT, clip the high voltage lead to the mains conductor of the DUT. In this case, we are shorting the line and neutral to the high voltage lead. Next, clip the return lead to the chassis of the DUT. If using the adapter box instead of clip leads, plug the three prong cord of the DUT into the adapter box. Next, clip the return lead to the grounded chassis of the DUT. When using continuity feature, continuity check is connected via the adapter box. If there is continuity between the continuity check and return, the test button will illuminate green, indicating that a continuous path exists between these two points and the resistance of this path is less than the continuity high limit. If it does not light up, the tester will indicate a continuity failure and stop the test. Close the DUT enclosure door, stand back, and press the test button to run your test sequence. Once completed, rotate the knob to review results.